Hey, good morning everyone. How's it going? Welcome to Monday morning in Australia. Well, actually it's Monday afternoon, come to think of it, 12.30. So, I'm uh, a little behind on myself. So who we got here? We got Peter, Sam, Travis, Imran. How's it going, Imran? 3X, uh, familiar faces. Just cleaning off some flux of um, tools. Got to do this periodically. So you try hard not to get flux on things, but my goodness, that stuff gets around. Uh, it gets a little bit annoying when you grab a tool and it's uh, got the icky sticky flux all over it. Doesn't take long, sort of a Monday morning thing. Probably should be a Friday afternoon, end of the week, uh, what do you call it, workshop cleanup thing but for me it tends to be more of a Monday morning crap I gotta get jobs done better clean up the office before I get started type job hey Margarita hey Ron Rogers from Missouri yes flux can be rather invasive or certainly good at spreading hey Capaz yeah, let's see hey Greg we're almost ready to go we'll just let some people build up well, last night's stream was interesting. I woke up this morning and it looks like about 24,000 views on last night's stream. That's really, really out of the normal for me. That, that was Clearly there was a lot of robots running around on YouTube last night. My normal is about one to 2,000 within 24 hours of the live stream. And then maybe four to 5,000 after the week. But 24,000 in 12 hours, that's pretty crazy. Maybe I should have a video on how I made my YouTube success in one night. And that will probably get 100,000 views. Hey, Corey Postma. I did pick up around about 80 new subscribers, so that was pretty good. That was the better bit. Okay, I think we're almost there. Just do my pentalobe here, which is the one we don't need for this, I don't imagine. But we will need it for other machines later in the day. Alright, let's get into it. <coughs> yeah, that's almost up at Lewis levels. Okay, so we've got this uh, 2011 A1278. Looks like it's got some sort of film all over it. Anyway, so it's coming up. Machine does not stay powered on. Restarts at random. So I'm going to guess some sort of corrosion or maybe it's just a RAM issue. I'm not sure. But I do believe this person had checked the RAM. So anyway, we will dig in and find out. Let's switch over to the overhead view. Let's see, adjust the camera since I was head button it last night probably. Hey, Kratos. Good morning, Victor. Okay, we've got, we've got Phillips, of course. And guess who didn't clean the Phillips driver? Me. That's okay. Yeah, I'd imagine that when it was originally installed, it was perfectly clear, but just aging the UV effect does have that yellowing tendency which is rather unfortunate. I believe it's from the bitterline content as I understand it. And it just makes it go that disgusting yellow colour. Uh, it could be a lot of things causing it. Okay, better clean. I think this will be a 2936, I think. They got themselves a nice upgrade. They were smart. They took out the optical drive. No one uses that anymore. 
So they've obviously done some work on this. They seem to care about it, so that's good. It's clean. Alright, let's have a quick look over the microscope. Oop, better turn on the microscope, this will be fun. Hey John Finn, how's it going? Let's see if that microscope's come up yet, otherwise we'll have to fiddle them around. Yep, we're good. Let's just get the zoom back. I'll just flip this over. I feel bad that I'm going to contaminate the UV yellowed. There we go. Yeah, it's the twenty nine thirty six. Mm hmm. My good old trustworthy board. My first ever repair. Yeah, Copaz, you're probably probably true. I just spent a whole bunch of money ordering more SSDs this morning. I do a fairly decent trade, just migrating people's machines from. Um, you know, hard drives to SSDs. Okay, why don't you want to clip up? Because a lot of people don't seem to use more than you know, a couple of hundred gigs on their hard drives. And so I can typically, with the older ones, I can typically get them over to a 250 gig solid state otherwise push come to shove I can get them up to 500 well it's certainly looking very clean on this side it could well be a memory issue but I think we'll just take the board out and have a good inspection on the other side even though it's clean on this side I don't know if they have taken the board out or anything in the past like some people will clean all the top but then that leaves the underside still as original with nearly 10 years worth of dust on it let's get this battery out The main screw looked kind of funny. Uh, they've just been chewed a little bit, but nothing bad. Let's put this sticker on the battery. Don't really need to put it on the hard drive in these ones. The fact that it's still got the backlight flex sticker on it means it perhaps hasn't actually been removed because that sticker just comes straight off the first time you touch it okay what do we want T6's for this T6 Hey, Braden Smith. Yeah, Margarita, too clean is always a bit of a curse. If it's been intermittent, I kind of half expect a little bit of corrosion somewhere. Wow, they even cleaned the un that's Maybe this actually hasn't been opened and cleaned, but there is a little bit of dust there. Maybe it's simply a case of it's lived in a very pristine environment. It does happen occasionally. Uh, it's so nice having good tools. I mean, you can 
you know, fix things without good tools, but it does make life a little bit harder. And now the part that I hate the most. Getting the microphone out on these. It always feels like a violation. What have I missed? That's stuck on the underside plastic. Yep, there we go. Hey Nathan Hopkins, uh, Victor and Yang, that 1502 no display, I'll put that aside for the moment, I haven't had a chance to look at it again yet this morning, but I will get around to it. For now, just thought I'd have a look at this one, try and get a win under the belt, and go from there. So, sometimes it's nice to have a, a win first thing Monday morning. Okay, so we do have 10 years worth of dust under here, but still from a clean, of, clean type environment. First thing you usually check is these bottom edges. There's dust, but it doesn't seem to be any corrosive effect. Well, well, this could be falling under the too clean category. Uh, let's hey, Jim, how's it going? Let's see, we'll just. Well, every time I think I see a bit of corrosion, it just turns out to be a bit of a moth wing or something like that. This could just be bad RAM. Though usually you get three beep scenario with that. Ainsley, are these eligible for the power supply cat replacement? Not on these, no. These ones, as far as I'm aware, do not suffer anything like that. Uh, we'll take the heat sink off and have a look. See if there's any other parts that maybe have been obscured that have trouble. Maybe I did pick the wrong board to take on this morning. Got 
Well, that came off too easy. Yeah, too, too easy. Because typically, when you take these off, you should have a bit of a suction effect. And you, know, you should feel it actually pop or crack the thermal paste when you take it off. Hmm. Could it be something as simple as that? I would be genuinely surprised if it was a thermal issue though. Because even though, even if the heat sink wasn't great, if nothing else, it should just throttle back. It shouldn't actually shut it down. It looks fresh, but it's actually not. It's yeah, pretty dry on the outside here. It doesn't look like it's ever been reapplied. So it looks like it did have a contact point, but it was basically limited to here. This is about the area that was still making transfer contact. Over apply, that's factory standard. Since it's non conductive, it doesn't really matter. Just splodge that stuff on there and move on. But yeah, uh, definitely, yeah, this central area is being covered, but the outside, not so much. Right, I'm just going to have a look over the back of the board again, or the top rather. Let's see if I'm missing something. We only need one little corrosive spot and then that should do the trick. I was genuinely expecting something along the bottom edge here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any issues under there, even though we just messed that poor little foam pad up. 29.36, your mistake. Hey, Prater. That has got to be the only spot so far that I've seen anything remotely like liquid damage, corrosion. And that is barely noteworthy. Hmm. Well, I should update that board number.
Yep. Clean off the thermal paste, who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's a case of uh, let's see, how can, I think, how can I justify this? Maybe it's a case of one area of the CPU was being kept cool enough because of that little bit of area that did still have contact, but then another area was overheating because it was just trying to dissipate into air. Doesn't really sound like a good legitimate thing, but I'm kind of struggling to pick a fault here. Hey, how's the mouth? No, Prater, in this case, the board does boot, it just doesn't remain on. That's the problem. Something's causing it to shut down. So, 2011 House of Moth. 2936. Jason Jones, first time watch it. Oh. Notice when you're removing board from the case, do they normally stick to the unsub plastic or is a heat sink melted to it? They do have a um, tendency to stick. It's just a you know the usual sort of plastic plastic type adhesion that you get over time. They're just the way that plastic does have this tendency of sticking to itself. So it wasn't, it's not so much that the heat sink gets hot or anything like that, it's just plastic lights to get sticky. How long is it staying on for? Uh, let's see. Random. Looks like they've attempted RAM, SSD replacement. Yeah, just random. We've got our chipmunk. Chipmunk? Yeah, chipmunk, where are you, chipmunk? Pretty sure I took it out of that board from last night, but well, no guarantee of that, I guess. Let's go find it. Nope, I didn't. No bad electrolytic caps. It's difficult to say. It could be, but it is difficult to say. Make safe one. Yeah, power on. All right, that's. Try the other way. Yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, 
Let's see what happens. Okay, we've got CPU activity there. We're gonna sit and chat for a little bit while we wait to see what happens. Let's see if it decides to shut down or anything like that. You watch, it's not gonna do it because I didn't bother to test to see whether we had a thermal issue right at the start. I do, if you go to my repair items page, it's on there. Yeah, time to take the old flannelette off. So what is a chipmunk? It's a, The chipmunk basically lets us see if we've got power, there's SO state power, and then whether that power is actually at a good level, the 5 volt is actually close to 5 volt, and then the green blinking lets us know that we have CPU activity. So like I said, I'm just going to give it a little bit of time, see if it gives up, or whether we've actually cured it already. Hey Ahmed, from Egypt? You in Cairo, or you somewhere else? Thanks Pedro. You could certainly build one, but you know, what's your time worth? It's easy enough just to, you know, all this has to do is save you a couple of um, rabbit holes and you're paid back. You're in Cairo, cool. Like most kids, uh, when I was younger, I had aspirations of becoming a um, Egyptologist. But I mean, who doesn't? You look at all the very interesting history, the ancient history. You only go digging out in those fields. Is the design open source? Most likely not. No, I don't think it is. Well, it hasn't died yet, so I might just put this thing back into the case and then run it with my setup and see if we can get it to falter. Oh, Arnold G. I bet you those people over there in Egypt were like, oh, gee. Yeah, because that might have been it, that partially localized contact with the heat sink causing other areas of the CPU to overheat. Donald Hanson. On that chipmunk, does the activity light flash because of the data lines going on the USB? Um, yes, it, um, that is correct. The CPU activity on the data lines is what makes it do the flashing on the green. So which is what makes it quite useful. Because then you can go, well, we definitely do have a working CPU. Pedro, you can't talk about being an addict to other people. You are an addict, Pedro. Pedro is one of those people that decided to just have some fun getting an old MacBook and fixing it. And now he's a full-blown addict, and if he doesn't have MacBooks on his workshop bench to fix, he starts getting crazy. The empty desk syndrome.
be warned people if he messages you and you don't have a MacBook for him to repair you need to run away You should really be working on Norton motorcycles. Steve F. Working on 2936 myself. These older 1278s are starting to show their age. They are a little bit, yes. I do agree. I mean, not tremendously, tremendously bad, but they are starting to need a bit of extra TLC. It's hard for them to die, Copaz, because I've seen the 1534s and they kind of go, we can't die. The new generation is just not acceptable enough. Admittingly, <coughs> my um, preferred machines are the ones up to 2015. And then after 2015, well, that's just when everything went downhill with Apple, didn't it? Seventeen oh eight is about the only one that has a marginal level of acceptability. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a 1398 here that I don't seem to use enough. It mostly just sits in the sits in the workshop rotting. Oh, unbelievable. I can't believe I just did that. That's no good. It still works, but that's not good. Plastic's becoming brittle. Thrown so hard the rain came out of its sockets, that's crazy. That's, that is certainly quite a toss. I'm not doing a full reassembly, but I am putting at least enough screws in it so that the panels don't come flying apart when I flip this thing over. Who was it that killed the monitors with the um, plastic BB gun? I mean, that was crazy. I mean, I know they were old monitors and stuff, but killing perfectly good equipment like that you know if I was Paul S I would have absolutely raged in fact he probably did it's like don't go and kill the equipment like that pointless waste ah come on where are you hard drive
Ja, det gör Was it Lewis or was it someone else that shot it? Either way, I was like, yeah, I don't normally pull out the whole barraging looks and whatnot, but that time I was like, no, that was just wrong. It was Lewis. I mean, I know he owns the store and I know he'd pay for it and everything, but even still. I'll give him my disparaging look, my stare down. I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. You tried to kill Paul's Seiko 30 hertz too. Yeah, that's a really unfortunate screen, the 30 hertz update, but it's still useful as something. Yeah, maybe just as a display screen for the office somewhere. No need to kill these things. Okay, we're just booting to my test system. Well, I don't doubt Paul would have got another one. I'm sure Lewis did pay for it. It was just more like, why? Why did you do that? Was he trying to become like Tech Racks or whatever it is? That's a channel that I just can't handle. Seeing all that perfectly good equipment being destroyed. But it's profoundly popular. I remember him tossing the phone. That was almost a useful video just to demonstrate the toughness of it. Yeah, I've got flux all over my gloves now. I've been naughty and I've bought seven boxes of gloves to keep me going for the next year and a bit. The P50 with water drenching, yeah, that was funny. It's not something I would have done either, but at least it survived. Mostly. Brightness is starting to get a little weak on this. Let's see, ignore. Let's bring up the temperature sensors. Yeah, Len I saw Lenovo did replace that. The temperatures are a fair bit higher than I would expect, considering it's just booted. We're like an up in the high 80s, low 90s for the cores, and that is definitely higher than it should be. And they're jumping up, so I wonder if in fact the heat pipe is dead. There is no way it should be running this hot. Is the Gmail your PayPal on your website? Yes, it is, Prater. Uh, pldaniels at gmail.com. Yeah, this is way too hot. I'm going to put a different heat pipe on it, which means I have to take the damn board out again. Oh, God help me. I have had a heat pipe machine before, it was a A1425 and that machine had been to multiple repair places. That's interesting, this rebooted on its own, it shouldn't do that.
they had been to multiple places and I'd almost given up and it was at that time that I received the infrared camera from Jim and I decided I'd just test it to look at the board see if there was anything I was missing and that's when I could see that with the infrared camera that the heat was not spreading out along the heat pipe and I was like well that explains that easiest thing here is just going to be replace the heat pipe see what happens because unfortunately I can't do anything with it like this because it's all upside down definitely getting hot there and the heat is quite intense here so yeah and the heat pipe basically does not have any real it's got a bit of warmth in it but that's probably just warmth from the metal conducting it the sound flux yes it is a clear wrap although not so clear anymore check your paypal go paypal check paypal paypal Make sure no one sees my passcode. Is that from Mr. Oliver? Here we go, now it tells me. Thank you very much, Mr. Oliver. Let's see. I wish I could let a message come through. I know you can send it, but it doesn't i got to find a way that my system will scan the emails, find the new, um, find the new messages that are coming from PayPal, extract the message, and then put it up on screen. That'd be a project for another day. All right. Thank you very much. That's going to be a lot of ice cream. I'm going to get fat. It helps a lot, Peter. It helps a lot. By the way, we did officially last night hit the mark for the um, the goal that I was after for the home loan. So now it's a case of I've got to decide whether well I have to consult with the bank and see whether they want me to submit the loan application based on the prior three years of tax income or whether they want the one that I need to do basically tomorrow because tomorrow is end of financial year and so I'll have a new tax return and to be fair this year's tax return is going to be impressively it's about 50% more this year. Okay, maybe not that much. 40% more than my normal returns. Such to the point, it's probably going to give me a bit of grief. But I can always defer things and, yeah, meddle with the numbers a little bit. Not, not hide any of my income, but just shift things around for the next couple of months. Okay, I need another heat pipe. No, uh, not audit time. Like I said, I'm not hiding any information. I'm just need to shift it a little bit so that they're a little less brutal on me. It is also particularly tricky because of the fact that you know I am getting US dollars and I cannot find a suitable heat pipe in there
Ja, gotcha. I'll just take it from one of my own 2936s. Looked like the contact zone from the old pipe is still uneven. It It's hard to say because of the way it got pulled off. But even if the contact zone was a little bit funny, it shouldn't be running that hot. Moves some income to the business expenses. Well, most of my income, yeah, it's tricky. Because I'm a sole trader, everything is basically income um, and expenses are you know, fully claimed and things like that. But the downside is that because I doubled the price almost on Flexboard View, it really jacked my income up. Speaking of which, the doubling of the price did not at all inhibit the sales. The sales still came through, so people obviously still felt it was good value. Contrary to some people who were saying that they would make sure that I would never ever get another sale of Flexboard View again. Um, yeah, that didn't quite happen, did it now? You and your big, I'm um, such a superior genius hacker boy. And you couldn't even stop sales on my software. Oh well. Anyway, because of that, the my expenses overall are extremely low now, relative to my income. Whereas when you spend most of your time fixing iPhones or you know stuff that you have to have a lot of replacement parts on, then your uh, Profit ratio generally is a fair bit lower, but now mine's gone from about a 0 0.6 up to about a 0 0.8. Whoops. Uh, it certainly changes the way I've got to do things a bit. You've got mail. Let's check. Let me check my Gmail. I don't normally use this workstation to check my mail. I've got two transactions here. Arnold Gonzalez. Aha! Uh -huh. I spotted it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is, well, PayPal bought it out to 11.17. Thank you very much. Uh, I do need to write, spend the time and write something that will make this a lot easier for everybody. If you have a lot of dependence on this stream, you can claim for it. <laughs> That's actually an interesting um, interesting way of pitching it. I wonder how that would go down. And they said, do you have any dependents? And I said, oh, about 22,000 of them. Yes, I have my crows out here. I don't mind crows, except for when they lie to me. And they start making god-awful noises like cats or something and you go racing out because you think oh one of my cats is fighting or something and you just find it's a crow and you're like really did you guys have to make that kind of noise I guess they f feel they have to do something considering that yeah they're pretty limited in their vocal expressions they're very smart in so many other areas but it seems they were not overly gifted vocally. I'm sure the butcher birds and the magpies mock them. I 
I will call out to the butcher birds and magpies occasionally, though my cats do not like it. They look at me as if I'm some kind of traitor. I start it and they go, you speak of their language? We're going to kill you. <laughs> of course, I have no idea what I'm saying to the butcher birds. I could be offending their families for all I know. Margarita. Forgot about the white hat hacker, or was he the foil hat hacker? Yeah, I don't know if he's much of a hacker at all. I'm not sure he could even work his way out of a rice paper bag, in all honesty, even when soaking wet. He's just one of those sort of people that loves to declare that they do all these sort of things. They've probably done six tours at Vietnam before they are even out of their mother's womb. Stuff like that. And you're like, uh-huh, mm-hmm, oh yeah, yep, yeah. okay, sure. And then they get all haughty and def aggressive when you call them out on their crap. And they come up with all these obscure bits of information or references that you'll probably never find because they don't exist, but they hope that you'll get stuck there chasing it down for long enough for them to run away. The sad thing is, those people have got to be careful because they will, not by me, but... They will get the wrong person one day and they will run themselves into a bit of strife, to say the least. You can't run your mouth off at people like that, making up BS stories and threatening people without eventually running into your own kind at some point. What kind of hacking? Um, probably COVID-19 lung hacking at that point. But seriously, I run into these sort of people quite frequently. They're these sort of basement dwellers that have some very exclusive, specific type knowledge and then they make up 99.999% of the rest of their stuff in the hope that you won't follow them, as in won't be able to understand what they're talking about, and then bow down on your feet and knees and say, take me under your wing, O oh genius, that I never knew I knew. Hey Gary Dutton, how's it going? Did you get that uh, hinge sorted out? Justin Brown, exactly, yeah. Real hackers are the sort that don't talk about it. The ones that, the more they talk about it, the less likely they are to be one. Peter S, this guy isn't even a script kitty. <sighs> I'm not sure he knows what a script is. Sounds like the story from my family is one guy's getting away of everything and he did until he started to mess with my family. Now he's pulling court and having multiple charges on file. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At some point they run into the wrong person. They find they pick on the person that happens to have time, resources and connections to make things happen, unlike the original person. Name and shame, no need to. Hey Rob Brown, good to see you. Uh, nothing's happened, I was just reminiscing on the good times. Because um, there was a declaration that they would make sure that I would never sell another copy of Flexboard View or that I'd never make another cent off it. But, um, they've kind of failed miserably at that. But I think the guy knows he's being called out because every time he posts now, I just laugh at his posts. I even, you know, actually post that I'm laughing at his posts. And then things get quickly amended after that. Okay, let's see what our temperatures are like now, whether we're still way off the scale or... There we go. No, 
if it was an L messing with me, I might have been concerned. Yeah, those temperatures are still pretty damn high, actually. What is going on here? The fans going absolutely bonkers. The fan speeds over 4,000 RPM. All the CPU cores are registering 90 plus. This makes no sense at all. Hmm. The Pecky SA and GPU are also way up there. Bad sensors, but all of the cores? It doesn't quite seem right. Uh, CPU core is 1.162. Yeah, this just doesn't make sense. The cores are drawing 20 watts. I don't get that. Well, if it was a bad sensor, usually what would happen is it'll either be plus or minus 129, usually plus 129, and it would tend to just stay there. It wouldn't... See, these are cooling down slightly, but nowhere near enough. Reset the MVRAM. Well, I guess it's worth a shot, isn't it? That's really weird. I've never had that happen. It's not really fluctuate. It is moving, but and it is drifting ever so slightly slower down. But um, the the fan is dropping. It's down to two and a half now. But normally with these machines, when I boot them, they'll drop back down to about 50 within a minute. It's just taking way too long. Overclock BIOS, hmm. I have my doubts, but uh, I'll do a PRAM reset. Shut down. Okay. It, I can understand it running hot, but not that hot. Hey, Death Pump, how's it going? Yeah, this is not doing a PRAM reset. Or maybe it is. Okay. You have to use the left side keys. You're kidding me? I've always used the right side and never had any troubles. Uh, I'll have a look in a bit, Copaz. Left side goes straight to SMC. Okay. So I guess I'll do... 
command option on, then boom, boom. There you go, we'll see how we go. Like, if that was the case, then the fan shouldn't be running out at 4,000 RPM. So that's, um, I would understand if it was running a high temperature, but the fan was sitting down low, like 1,000 RPM or something like that. But this is at 90 degrees and at 4,500 RPM. I could always run ASD actually. Maybe I should do that. Actually, what's the time at the moment? 1.30. I've got a customer coming in around about 2, so I better be able get ready for that. My poor wife is currently dealing with a very sore back, so... I have to make sure I don't forget to deal with customers because I don't want her getting up to have to handle them. Ah, put my damn ASD somewhere. Well, we've changed the heat pipe, but it's entirely possible that the heat pipe is also damaged. This, you know, second one. Yeah, again, see, we're up in the 90s, and we're pretty much flat out on the fan. We're 4,600. I'm not sure if I've got another. I could try one more. I'm just not sure if I've got another one handy at the moment. We can pop the back off and have a look at the infrared camera and see if it is actually transferring heat or not. Yep, that's a negatory on the that one. Is this the Mac you left on? No. Okay, we're down to 70s now. So that's actually marginally better. Still crazy hot and slow to come down. The fan isn't ramping up fully and it's reading high temperature, it's like a SMC issue. Well, it was fully ramping up, it was like 4,500 RPM, which is pretty much the maximum that I know of. Maybe 6,000 with some of the new ones. And it's just, it's coming down roughly with the temperature. Yeah, I've noticed the amps coming down too. Not sure what the deal is there. The amps might be coming down just simply as a response to the battery. I should have disconnected the battery. SMC reflow, not really an option. Okay, we're all now back in a normal range. Yeah, we were until I started moving this around. All of a sudden, the, as soon as I moved that, bam, it's straight up to 70 and 80.
He's probably rebuilding Colonel Cash. Hmm. Hey, Jason Shepard. Sounds like a touchpad sensor issue. Hmm. Possibilities all around. But the CPU proximity sensor is tracking roughly similar to the CPU, so they're different sensors. You know, one's on the board itself, one's in the CPU, and they're tracking relatively similar. What is the kernel CPU usage? Good question. I don't know. Ninety five, ninety eight per cent idle, it's predominantly idle. So if we get down to 60, yeah, it's not too bad. But all i got to do, let's see, move the mouse around. Let's see, move the window around. Let's see, resize this window. Nope, come on. Yeah, let's resize that window. Bam, bam. Lewis is playing Dota. Oh, he's got to practice that. He needs to get good at it. <laughs> Not that I'm any good at Dota, but hey, you know, he needs to get better at it. CPU voltage is 0.67. What's the heat pipe temp compared to CPU temperature? Uh, let's see, 52, incoming is 29, outgoing is 46, CPU cores are now at 60. So it's still, they all track fairly similar. The yeah, amp spike when you resize, yeah. It's like this poor thing doesn't know how to do anything. Let's run Valley and see how close to death this can come. Oh, the actual CPU, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I've got to flip it over and have a look and probe it. But I'm not going to be doing that right now. I'm thinking I'm going to have to drop this short because I've got to go deal with this customer that's turning up. Uh, Zing Hai, you can just run away because... No one knows that. Well, I think I'm going to have to just jump away for the moment, go deal with this other job that I've got to get done, and then I'll probably come back. We'll put this on the workbench and see if it drops out on us. I have a feeling it probably was something thermal related because the CPU is definitely not fully covered by the thermal transfer paste. And yeah, these figures are pretty damn high, but um, I'm not sure what I can do about improving them. They are slightly improved on the previous one, but that could have just been pure luck. I am somewhat sorry that I didn't 
check this first. Uh, we're at 6200 exhaust. Let's see. It could be a bad heat pipe as well. Is the display voltage the direct value or the measured value? I'm not sure. The heat pipe value is staying a little lower than I would expect. It's only showing 63 when the CPU is running at 90. I would expect that to be up around about 80. And so it's about 20 degrees too low. So we could actually have a second bad heat pipe. Liquid metal cooling place, thank goodness not. Uh, Alright, look, I'm going to have to close it up at this point. I've got to go deal with this other person that's going to turn up because otherwise I'm going to get in trouble because my poor wife is going to have to get out deal with the back pain while I'm sitting here chatting to people and then I'll see if I can come back later so we're going to leave it at that for now my suspicion is maybe we have a bad heat pipe a second bad heat pipe it's entirely possible if it increases rapidly then it isn't get rid of the heat properly I had a similar issue it's not increasing rapidly but it depends on where I suppose they have the sensor, whether they're sensing it at the head of the pipe or at the tail of the pipe. But, um, yeah, anyway, I'll give it another shot later. But in the meantime, I'm going to have to take a scoot. So I'll see you all a little bit later, maybe. And uh, thanks for dropping in anyway. Once again, we had another situation where we're just not fixing the machine. Maybe I'll try the 1466 after this, which is going to be my first choice originally. But can't win everything. So I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Mm-hmm.